<laughs> Kevin. Hi there. I see a computer. I see your okay. face. Hey. There we are. All right. How's it going? I'm doing okay. Sorry, I was on my desktop computer. A little technical glitches. No worries. I have been tr having trouble with my internet, so I was just like, oh, I'm sure it's the internet because everybody in the world is on it at once. Um, <laughs> so I can totally appreciate, um, yeah, I can totally appreciate the technical difficulties, but really happy to have you joining us. My name is Megan Jones. We've kind of been communicating via email so it's good to get sort of the the face to face right um the face to face as it gets these days right yeah exactly exactly um so i really appreciate you joining us today because we obviously have a lot of artists um on the line so to speak i've been making all these phone references that don't really apply but you'll catch on um uh you are a you know a finance professor at the Berkeley College of Music. Um, so we're going to kind of discuss the ebbs and flows of finance, um, how that's going. Obviously, these are strange and difficult times we're in. So when it comes to the economy and how it affects artists, we just you know feel that's a discussion worth having. So um, tell us you know all about. I want to learn about your experience and kind of your knowledge on this daunting subject. I myself. Um, I'm, I'm horrible. At I can balance a checkbook. Again, that dates me probably <laughs> because, um, yes, I still have a checkbook. For kids that don't know what a checkbook is, um, <laughs> but I'm just curious, when did you first realize that you wanted to kind of like pursue, you know, education as a career? I mean, probably all the way back in high school, I remember tutoring other students and enjoying it. But it was in my mid-20s that I really figured I wanted to teach. And I went that route, did high school for a bit, and then ended up at Berkeley a little winding path later. <laughs> a little, so it's just kind of always something that resonated with you then, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I just always enjoyed the sort of face-to-face -face connection, helping people learn something. I mean, different people find different things gratifying. For some people, it's cooking up. A stupendous meal for me it was teaching yeah so i'm curious then how you ended up teaching a subject like finance to creatives like where where did that how did you figure that that was your that was your in well i was an economics major and had a master's in mathematics education and had done some graduate work in economics uh, how i ended up at berkeley was just pure dumb luck and circumstance <laughs> I worked at, been working as a private math tutor as a side job, worked with the daughters of a highly regarded Berkeley professor, and then their math person like quit two weeks before a semester started and they went, Oh my god, does anyone know anyone? Yeah. Like, is there a doctor in the house? And you were like, Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, of course it's one thing to get a job, it's another thing to keep it. That was a bit over fifteen years ago. Well, seems like you're, you're holding it down there on the East Coast. So thank you for that. Um, so, you know, obviously some of your students are young, creative entrepreneurs in the making. So has this current crisis affected what you teach and, and the message that you're conveying to them? How has that been? Obviously, the courses all went online, but yeah. you're asking about content. Um, not really. I mean, we'll talk about how it applies to our principles, but first of all, like, we don't know with the current economy that they say, is it going to be a V or a swish? Mm. Uh, in other words, does it go down fast and up fast, or does it go down fast and up slow? Okay. Um, and if it goes down fast and up fast, I mean, I'm mostly teaching people who have one or two years left in their college. So if they're lucky, it's back to normal by the time they graduate. Right. So, um, so, so obviously seeing, and that's the down fast, up fast, that's obviously seeing something at least a couple of years in the future, this is still going to be this sort of like ripple effect. Right. I mean, there's the down fast, up slow, right? I mean, a lot of uh, the great depression, right? Was, we spent four years going down, 29 to 32, and then it took about eight years to come back up. Wow. Uh, 
the financial crisis, the more recent one in 08, right? We really went down in 08 and part of 09. And we didn't, the economy didn't really get back to normal until 2015-ish. Yeah. So that that was definitely a down pretty fast up slow. Yeah. I'm I'm just like a, on a personal note, I'm curious, like, you know, I've heard the term recession, like floating around, but like, is this is this a recession like i don't i don't feel like maybe the closest thing to what we've seen but i don't feel like you know we were this is not something I, maybe necessarily we, we saw coming down the pipeline so to speak uh i'm just curious about that yes and no i i'll try to keep this short um recession has two different meanings people usually use it colloquially just to mean the economy is not doing well, unemployment is high, mm -hmm. right? The technical meaning of recession is that the, the amount of economic activity per week, if you wish, is shrinking. Okay. So things are which is why we can say the recession ended in 2009, even though the job market was dismal in 2010. Mm even though a lot of people would colloquially just say whenever it's bad, they call it a recession. Now, I'm sorry, your sec the second part of your question? Yeah, no, I mean, you, you kind of answered it. I mean, I, I guess I was more interested in, it. that makes sense. I think that, you know, that's the closest people can sort of associate um, with the term recession. And if this is something that like, you know, was correct. Like, I, I almost didn't want to be like, uh, misusing the term, if you will. Well, we are, uh, we are undeniably in the sense of economic activity is shrinking. Of course it is. Mm -hmm. In fact, like, if you look at the unemployment numbers on a one to week to week basis, this has been a spike orders of magnitude bigger than anything we saw in 08, 09 in a single week right there was this bleed over about a year mm -hmm. he lost you know i've heard something like six million jobs in the last few weeks mm -hmm. and it's going uh, as they like literally stop work and of course artists are among the more impacted right There's performance artists among the more impacted by that so undeniably and then i always say you can get three quarters of a macroeconomics course if you just burn the following phrase into your mind one person's spending is another person's income. Hmm. Interesting. So, yeah, that definitely yeah. Put, puts it in perspective for sure. And when you yeah. kind of think about it like that. Right. So then, of course, all these people who have less jobs, you know, so the worry, that's the sort of down, fast, up, slow idea is if people all start feeling poor, now people are spending less. Right now it's, uh-oh, we're behind on how much money we have. We're poor now, right? Are we going to have enough to buy the place or put the kid through college in 15 years? So let's not do go on that cruise ship. Let's not, you know, go to the concerts. Let's not, you know, get the fancy new sound system for our home. Mm -hmm. Right. And then, of course, that that ripples. Then what about the people who are doing this? And then they feel poor, et cetera. Okay. Um, typically, either the government steps in and picks up the slack or it's a very long, very slow crawl out. Oof. Yeah. Uh, or something like world war two happens and suddenly everyone has a job, but like, you don't really hope for that. <laughs> yeah. I, I think I, I, I'm thinking we're, you know, I don't know if, well, we won't get into much of the politics here, but you did, you did mention obviously that, um, you know, obviously, with this crisis, it's taken a massive impact on, you know, the economy, of course, like you said, the arts um, taking, you know, the biggest hit in times of crisis, typically the artistic community. Um, in what ways do you think the pandemic affects, you know, will affect artists economically? I mean, outside of you know, jobs, you know, can, can one prepare for this type of crisis? You know, like, I don't know, what are, you know, just curious about that. <laughs> Uh, of course, the time to prepare for a crisis typically means right before the crisis happens. Mm. <laughs> I mean, is it better to be an artist with $25,000 in the bank than one with $25 in the bank? Of course. Mm. Uh, I mean, 
you can in, imagine if somebody is already has a big reserve, if you know you're not performing for the next few months, well, maybe this is the time to write your al next album, right? This is the time to get creative. This is the time to do the things that you can do despite the limitations. But it, it's, it, you know, if the question is, how do you prepare for it? Of course, if you have many different income streams, some of them hopefully are continuing. If you're teaching music lessons, hopefully you can do that remotely. Mm -hmm. You know, some artists are, of course, doing live shows over the internet. My feeling is that that's something, but don't think of it as a one-to-one -one replacement. Okay. So I am curious because, you know, you, you bring up alternative ways that artists are, you know, still trying to put work out there. Um, of course, having lost the, the sort of practical means of, you know, either showing in a gallery or performing to an audience. Um, however, like these digital platforms, right, they still mm -hmm. require maybe some sort of investment. Would you say in a time of crisis, it's important to continue to invest or maybe just like play it safe with your finances? As with many things, the truth is somewhere in the middle. I would be very hesitant to tell an artist to go all in on setting up a super fancy home studio. Um, for one thing, I feel like, how to put this, if I can do an analogy to pro sports mm -hmm. for just a moment, because I think there's a lot in common between like the live performance and the pro sports and this idea that right people will pay if it's scalped hundreds of dollars to see a game where you get a better view from your television set. Mm. Right. And that, so what are they paying for? They're not actually paying to see the game. Right. Because if it's about seeing the game, they'd stay home and watch television. They're paying to be part of that crowd, to be part of that experience, to feel like they're up close to it. Mm. And my, you know, just by feeling is obviously, you can do some of that on the internet. Um, you can try to be more personal with your fans, corresponding more, um, take lots of requests when you do your performance. Yeah. But I still feel like, you know, the person... I'll come back. Oh no, Kevin's frozen. No. Maybe we'll have to add him back in. He's having such a good conversation. <laughs> back in here. Yep. Ooh. Let's see telling you the internet y'all awesome we, we and we do have some questions from the audience i really appreciate you guys sending those questions and i'll i will definitely try to get to um i will definitely try here we go kevin i'm going to add you um I will definitely try to get to those. So I appreciate you guys. Hi again. Sorry about that. That's okay. Um, uh, how much did you hear there? Where did I cut myself off? Yeah, I, I think you um, were sort of like just talking about um, the, oh, I see some papers and not your face. Just an FYI if you want to. Yeah, there we go. Oh, here we are. Um, Hooray. Let's look around. <laughs> Um, you're sort of like mid sports analogy, kind of talking about how, um, you know, again, the experiential factor is, you know, what sets yeah. um, some of the artists apart. But again, you know, maybe if artists are able to, you know, like you were saying, take requests or really um, perhaps cater a little bit more to their audiences, um, yeah. that they might able to, you know, I don't know. See that, that that's exactly it. Perfect. That figure out what is it the people are really paying for, right? Because people could download your music and stream it or whatever for free. So when they're paying to see you, 
what is it that they're getting and focus on delivering that and don't over invest on the gear that may right. not really be what people are paying for. Right, right. So, it, you know, kind of content in a sense, right? Like really make sure that that that's uh that's key and locked in okay yeah i mean they i mean you have to obviously sound okay i mean as i <laughs> i may have said later you know paint your wall if it's going to make for a better background right have yeah. a quick camera invest in a stand but don't spend thousands of dollars to get this studio like quality that right. really is not what people are paying for as they stream it on facebook or Instagram. Right. It's it's like, are they going to come to a concert in your living room when when we're able to uh, be closer than six feet to each other? Probably not. Um, but yeah, definitely. I can I can kind of like see your point on that. So um, just for those kind of tuning back in, first off, thank you very much. Um, I am here with Boston based educator um, Kevin Blockschwenk and, you know, with us today sharing his knowledge about the economy and finance and kind of like how it applies to arts. Um, so I'm curious, it's common to hear investors and, and entrepreneurs out in the world um, saying things like diversify your portfolio. Um, so what does that mean? How, how does that correlate to artists? What does that mean for artists and, and kind of creative ventures? Sure. Uh, part of diversifying portfolio, of course, just means having you know, a little piece, a little piece of a lot of things, um, a very well balanced portfolio, you might deliberately have some assets that are more volatile, and maybe even some quote, counter cyclical assets, meaning they go up when most things go down. Okay. So for example, I'm making this up, but like, if you invest in like dollar stores, uh -huh. and then when the economy goes terrible, those are going to start doing really well. Okay, okay. So it's like most of your investments do worse, but those now do better. Um, so in that sense, from the point of view of an artist, it's good to have, you know, be doing a bunch of different things, have different streams of income, right? So you might have a, a lot of Berkeley people, there's their corporate band and their original band, and they teach a couple lessons and they might teach a class at a public school. And you do a little bit of thing in the theory that if one or two implode, you still have something. Oh, implode temporarily, that is. <laughs> uh, I would say that, um, again, if you want to go with a real balancing, you might try to go for things where even in a time such as this, the, that part of the business is still going on and maybe even doing better. I mean, a lot of people respond to a recession by going back to school. A lot of people, a lot of people say, I have nothing to do. Maybe I'll try learning something. I'll do a new hobby. My feeling is that this might be a very good see about, about teaching, at least informally. Okay. Interesting. I mean, yeah, pr pretty soon. I, I guess that that's, um, you know, hopefully by the end of this, I don't know, my Spanish will improve. I guess that's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you're right. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, what what better time than now? Um, man, um, econ the economy and, and finance is really such a dense subject. I can't even begin to scratch the surface. <laughs> so, so hats off to you, sir. For well, of course, I barely scratched it. <laughs> Um, for making a ray, but do you have any like easy reading or any sort of like, you know, online resources that you would recommend for beginners on this subject? Sure. Um, the first thing I do, they're on YouTube. It's just called Crash Course. They have well, crash courses on so many different topics and they have a crash course in economics. And that's certainly a very good uh, starter. I've seen a few have a, a couple extra hundred dollars to spend the well, master classes. I see there's one with Paul Krugman about economics, which I haven't done it, but it looks really impressive in terms of books. I mean, really economics for dummies is as good as anything. Really? Yeah. I mean, it, it's right in the title there, right? So I, yeah. 
I guess like <laughs> you you can't get any simpler you can't get any simpler than that. Um, okay, that's really good to know. Um, I'm curious if there's anything we're kind of like coming to a, a, a close, but curious if there's any you know anything else you'd like you know creative entrepreneurs out there to you know I don't know who are trying to make a name for themselves um, again given sort of the crazy times that we're in um any little nuggets of wisdom or things that you think you know man i i wish somebody would have advised me of this or maybe like a common theme you're seeing with your students hard to tell with students um listeners feel free to ignore what i'm about to say i'm sure you've heard it before <laughs> but I will say that uh, my main area of research at Berkeley is actually looking at Berkeley grads who have gone into non-music careers and are doing well for themselves. Interesting. And I asked them what the, yeah, by website, otherberkeleyalumni.com. We've done 180 <laughs> interviews. But um, the uh, a common theme that I hear is that so many people, when they started exploring other things, said, but I went to Berkeley, or, you know, I'm a musician. It's all I know how to do. And then once they started getting into another career, they realized that by being artists, they had a whole host of skills that they didn't realize they had. They were really good at relating to people. They were really good at thinking the big picture. They were really good at thinking outside the box. And these often are very useful. So mm -hmm. if art is really what you want to do, go for it. But don't feel trapped if you're starting to feel like your profession is a trap. There are a lot of other opportunities and you have a lot of really great skills. That is really great actually, like dropping that little nugget on us because I think it's easy, right, for artists to get stuck. I think it's easy for artists to then start to doubt themselves right in their talents not realizing that you know just because you've thought of this your entire life I'm, I'm gonna be a musician this is all that I've ever wanted um and realizing that you know you know you could have other skills outside of playing the guitar or singing really well or whatever it is that sort of um can help you out in the long run and I think that's you know really interesting as well um, sort of those like innate traits that one has, you know, it's not necessarily, you know, something that can be taught. I don't think you can teach somebody like how to be a people person, you know, that's just, yeah. that's just something that is um, in us and in innate as humans. And I think that creatives are more so those types of conduits and what we really need in the world. So um, that is wonderful advice, Kevin. Thank you very much. Um, I'm very curious to go on and get myself a copy of Finance for Dummies because <laughs> I definitely, I definitely would love to understand this a little bit more. I mean, it's definitely above my pay grade, but um, but still, you know, want to educate myself nonetheless. Um, so maybe, or maybe I'll go on YouTube um, and find one of those crash course videos you were talking about um, because, again. I think arming yourself with a little bit of knowledge can go a long way. So I really appreciate you hopping on here today with me. It was a pleasure speaking with you, um, even though the internet was kind of crazy. <laughs> All right, thanks for putting up with that. Hey, no, no worries. Um, I'm, I'm happy it worked out. So um, thank you again, like I said, for sharing your knowledge with our community. Um, for everyone watching at home, Thank you. Um, but this entire week, we're actually going live with Industry Exchange at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, I'm going to be here every day. Get used to this face. Um, you're going to see more of it. But um, be sure to follow at Raw Artists uh, for the update on the next speaker tomorrow. Um, but my name is Megan Jones. Um, you can follow my shenanigans online. And we'll see you guys tomorrow. Kevin, thank you. And we'll, we'll touch base after this.